What's up everyone, this is Adam with TAT Express. And in this video, I'm gonna cover oil going into the coolant. Now this is a messy problem, so there's a few tips that I'd like to go through to find out exactly what's going on. Now, I'm gonna be talking about a DD platform, but these, these tips can be applied to any major diesel engine out there. Guys, if you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225 253017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. TAT Express is also hiring, so if you're interested in applying, you can check out our careers page. Let's get right into this video. Okay, so oil going into the coolant, as I mentioned, can be a messy problem. When oil gets into the cooling system, the radiator collects the oil, the, the degas bottle, which is your reservoir for your coolant, collects all this oil, and it gets really, really dirty. There's, it's gonna be times where if you do get it repaired, that you're gonna have to do multiple flushes and maybe have to replace the coolant reservoir just to get all that oil out of the coolant. Now, why does this happen? There's a few things that you can check, and I'm gonna give Go through a few of those right now so that we can try to figure out what's going on with this particular truck. Before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of a history. Now, this problem has already been an existing problem on this truck. He's had the oil cooler replaced and he still has the same problem. Now, the oil cooler is probably going to be the first problem that you're going to be looking for to see if this is the source of the problem. A lot of times, the oil cooler, this is a particular oil cooler. Now, all diesel engines are going to have oil coolers, even the Series 60, Cummins ISX, or our X15 as well, Volvos, they all have oil coolers. Now the concept is just oil passing through here and it's sitting in where the coolant actually is and it basically is supposed to cool off the oil and that's how oil cooler works. Now the problem is some of these oil coolers can go bad. So we pulled this oil cooler and since we know this oil cooler has just been replaced, we wanted to go ahead and test it anyway to verify it's not leaking. There's different tests for these particular oil coolers but for this one we're gonna, we put plates at the end, we apply pressure, and we dip it in water. And that's basically how you test an oil cooler. Now, if you have an oil cooler that has high mileage and is susceptible of being, being bad, I would suggest going ahead and replacing it because sometimes these oil coolers will leak only when they get hot. As you know, man, metal expands with heat, and when that happens, sometimes you have some oil coolers that can leak. When we did pull this oil cooler, we did notice that there was excessive silicone where the O-rings seal. Now, the O-rings, is what actually seals this, this oil cooler to the manifold here. So over time, those O-rings can get hot and lose their seal and cause a leak. And the reason why oil is going into the coolant is because oil pressure is always gonna be higher. So oil pressure is always gonna be higher when you're running, uh, you got your RPMs up. Uh, DD, DD platforms have low oil pressure at idle, but when you're running it, you're up in the 50 PSI, 60 PSI, and the cooling system is usually not going over 12 to 13 PSI. So when you have oil pressure that's higher than coolant, of course, that's why oil goes into the cooling system. This one tested out fine. We didn't have any issues with this going on. The next item that you're gonna be checking is the EGR cooler. Now, there's the same test that you can run, run. You can pressurize the EGR cooler to see if it's leaking. If it is leaking, then of course, that would be the source of your problem. The next thing that you will be checking is the air compressor. The air compressor also has coolant going into it and oil. So you can have some issues with a cracked head on your compressor and you have bypassing oil going into your cooling you can have it that way and the way that you bypass the, the compressor is when you bypass the compressor by removing the the coolant hoses that's going to allow you to test that compressor and see if it's actually causing any issues with your engine another thing that we saw on this particular truck is that it has excessive pressure now usually when an oil cooler goes bad or an EGR cooler you're not going to have too much excessive pressure usually when we see EGR coolers go bad you're just going to see the the the, the coolant bottle become a little bit a little bit sooty but this particular engine, which I'm gonna show you some close-ups here shortly, has a lot of oil contamination going into the coolant. Another thing that we've noticed is he had a ruptured hose happen, which is a coolant hose rupture. And we see some JB Weld that are, is on top of the radiator, which gives us an indication that this radiator has attempted to be replaced or repaired. Now, excessive pressure going in the coolant system is not good, okay? If you have excessive pressure, as 
I mentioned, usually coolant pressure doesn't run over 15 PSI. So when that happens, you either have the top, the actual coolant top that releases the air, but if there's too much pressure going in there, then you're gonna have hoses bust, you're gonna have radiators crack. So that particular indicator shows us that we have some major problems going on. The next step that we're gonna be taking is called a compression test. And with this particular truck, it's called a relative compression test, which is basically just, it's a test we run with the computer, we turn the key, the engine does not start, and the computer is co basically just comparing the pressure of each cylinder by reading the pressure off of the injectors. Now, if we do have an, if we do have a cylinder that's showing low pressure, then that's an indicator that we have either a head gasket going on or a bad head. Another thing that we look up is we pull DDAC reports to ensure that the truck has not overheated. If we have any indication that the truck has overheated, that is going to be a head replacement and of course replacing the head gasket. Now, since the oil cooler tested out fine, the air compressor looks good, the EGR looks good. Unfortunately, since we've run a relative compression test, if we see a cylinder that's low, we're going to have to pull this head and replace the head and the head gasket. Now, as I mentioned, this is a messy problem. Oil going into the coolant, it's just, it's, it's a mess. So even after we replace the head and head gasket, if he still has oil in the coolant, we're going to have to flush this repeatedly. So it could be maybe a few weeks until, or even a month until we get all the oil out of the coolant system. So that's what we found with this particular truck. I hope this information was helpful. Thank you for watching. I hope this information was useful. If you like this type of content, then be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. Again, thanks for watching, and until next time, be safe.